In this video, I'm going to subject you to my awful art skills in order to talk about tongue position, how our tongue should move when we articulate, and some common issues with the tongue motion in articulation. But first, I want to say Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. We made it. I also want to give a little update on the subscriber drive that I was doing for the end of the year with the goal to reach 750 subscribers. I'm actually recording this video on December 29th, so I have no idea if we made the goal or not yet. Right now, it's just over 10 more subscribers needed, so we very well may have made it by the first of the year, but I have no idea. So if the channel is over 750, even if it's not, thank you so much to everybody who subscribed and shared this channel. We really got super close if we didn't actually make it, uh, so I'm really appreciative of that. If this channel, as you're watching this video, is below 750 subscribers, then subscribe so that we can make it there. And if it's over, good job, everybody. I'm so honored and, and so happy to see how this channel has taken off, especially in the last few months. And I'm excited to continue making great content with my beautiful, wonderful art abilities, which will not be featured in many future videos, but I think it'll be a good one for this video. So without further ado, let's get into talking about this tongue position stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is sort of describe what's happening in this diagram. This is sort of just a neutral playing position, and it's basically like the profile of your face. So if your clarinet's in your mouth and we sort of cut everything in half this way, this is sort of what it would look like. So this is the mouthpiece, the reed on the mouthpiece, the tongue is nice and high in the back and then sort of comes down and is very close to the tip of the reed. And then of course we also have our teeth and notice the bottom lip is over the bottom teeth. The top lip is not over the top teeth, but also notice that the top teeth and the bottom teeth are more or less in alignment. This is something that's kind of important and has maybe more to do with embouchure than tongue position, but it's something that most people overlook, that the top teeth and the bottom teeth should be more or less in line. Our natural bite usually puts the lower teeth behind the top teeth, so in order to get this, it's helpful to think about pushing the bottom jaw a little bit forward, and that also helps to firm up this bottom lip. So that's just an extra embouchure tip. But what we're really talking about today is the tongue position. So notice how the back of the tongue is nice and high, basically touching the top back teeth. You can get this nice high tongue by saying E, so if you want to try that, do a really dramatic E vowel like E, E, or like a cat hissing is another good way to think about it, so like shh, shh, that gets this back of the tongue nice and high. Now the problem with just an E vowel, vowel is that it moves the tip of the tongue too far back and you end up with sort of this shape, E which puts a lot of distance between your tip of your tongue and the reed. So we also have to add in an extra little ooh to get the tip of the tongue forward. Now the problem with just your standard English ooh syllable is that that's actually a very low tongue position. It's nice and forward like we want, but it's too low. So again, we lose air pressure and it's not directing the air at the reed as effectively as it can. So we need a nice combination of e in the back and sort of ooh in the front to get it forward and close to the reed. The end result of this is either like the French E U syllable or the German O umlaut, that sort of E E. It's kind of like saying U in English, but a little bit longer and more forward. E E. So that's the basic tongue position. And the reason why that tongue position is so important, it all has to do with pressurizing the air and directing the air really effectively at the reed. So by having the tongue nice and high and also nice and close to the reed, it creates a very narrow passage here between your top roof of your mouth and actually getting into the reed so that this big body of air in your lungs down here and going through your nice open throat is making its way into this very narrow passage which creates a very high pressure air. It's the difference between nice high pressure air that sounds like this versus low pressure air where the tongue might be more open and all of this stays in a nice big open passage and you get sort of the difference on the clarinet is this. So I'm gonna start with low pressure and then do high pressure so you can hear the difference in the tone quality. So.
I'm not actually blowing any differently or harder or using more air. All I'm doing is changing that tongue position to focus the air at the reed and actually get good reed vibrations coming and going through the instrument. Now that's the sort of default tongue position. That's where the tongue should be if you're just playing slurred long tones. But of course, when we go to articulate, we have to touch the tongue to the reed, and that can invite some interesting variables that make things a little tricky. But let's talk about how to actually do it properly first. So if this tongue position is really important for getting a good sound, the key to good articulation is to keep this tongue position as steady as possible. It's also actually true you want to keep your embouchure and your air pressure as steady as possible too, and we'll talk about how that sometimes gets in the way. But thinking about the tongue first, the key to making it nice and steady and precise is to move as little of your tongue as possible. So the way that I like to think of it is almost as if there's a little pivot point here or a little fulcrum right at the very, very, very tip of the tongue. And then that just pivots back and forth to touch the reed and then back to this sort of neutral position. So no matter what kind of articulation we're doing, the back of the tongue stays nice and steady and just the tip of the tongue touches the reed to stop the vibrations of the reed while the air and embouchure stay steady and then comes off to allow the reed to vibrate and the note to come out cleanly. You can see by doing this, the back of the tongue is staying nice and arched in that nice high e -u tongue position, and it's just the tip of the reed that's changing, so there's literally no time where the tongue is out of position, and this makes it so the note can come out immediately, clearly, and instantly whenever it needs to, whenever that tongue comes off the reed and lets the reed vibrate again. Another really important aspect of the sort of perfect tongue motion for articulation is that it's really only moving between two positions. There's nothing crazy going on. You don't have to touch the reed and then push more firmly into the reed before you release. You don't have to wind up to smack the reed or anything like that. It truly is just in this position, touching the reed, and then straight back to this position. Just like our fingers when we're playing go from on the key to off the key and just alternate between those two positions, it's exactly the same for the tongue. It's either off the reed in a perfect tongue position for great sound quality or on the reed, still in a perfect tongue position for great sound quality. It's just dampening the vibrations of the reed so it's not vibrating. And then it just goes straight back, just like the finger on, off, on, off. Really, truly, just like a light switch going on and off in as effortless and minimal motion as possible. If you do this properly, you should hear pretty much no difference between slurring and articulating. Of course, there'll be a difference because the notes will be separated, but the sound quality will be just as if it's slurred the whole way, sort of like this. I'm gonna play a little scale pattern and I'm gonna do it slurred and then tongued and alternate back and forth, and hopefully the sound quality will be exactly the same. So hopefully you can hear how no matter what my tongue's doing, it's exactly the same sound quality. And that's the goal when you're working on articulation and doing articulation exercises. It also goes for staccato. This video isn't necessarily about staccato, but the only variable that changes when you do staccato is that your tongue stays on the reed longer, something like this. Whether your tongue's on the reed for a long time or very quickly for staccato versus legato, still no matter what, the air is just tss, and the embouchure is perfectly steady. And that's pretty much all there is to really good tongue motion for articulation. But I also wanted to talk about and demonstrate some of the common mistakes that come up when articulating. 
So the first mistake isn't actually really a tongue motion mistake, but it has more to do with the embouchure and the air. It's really, really easy once we start moving the tongue that the variables of the embouchure or the air pressure change as well. It's very natural in real life when we move our tongue, whether we're talking or chewing, oftentimes our jaw or our lips are moving as well. So it's very intuitive for those to go together and it takes a bit of practice to really separate them and have the tongue move truly independently from the air and embouchure. What you will hear if this is an issue in your playing is that slurring may sound really fine and, and great, but once you start tonguing, the quality changes, especially at the starts of notes, because usually your embouchure will tighten up or move a little bit when you go to start the note. Same thing, your air pressure will sort of go along with your tongue and you might get sort of a huffing like whoo, whoo, with your air and that change in pressure will change the start of notes. Usually as you get into the note, it'll sort of normalize and your muscle memory will go back to a really good sound, but the starts of notes will always be a little funny. Maybe something like this. So you can hear that the sound normalizes, especially when it's slower articulation, but the beginning of it doesn't match the middle of it. And that's what we want is for it to truly be the same consistent sound quality all the time, no matter what our articulation is doing. So if you're hearing weird things at the beginning of that, the first thing to do is check in with your air and embouchure, make sure that they're completely steady and moving independently from the tongue motion. Now the next very common mistake is still actually using pretty good tongue motion, but it's just putting too much pressure on the reed where you're really smacking the reed with your tongue, or sometimes you'll put the tongue on the reed and then sort of push off of the reed before you go to release the next note. That will sound kind of similar to the first issue and result in sort of a thuddy, strong beginning and, and sort of weird things happening again at the starts of notes, something like this. So you can hear how there's that little bit of thud. And even worse, if you combine that little too much tongue motion with like a choking off or stopping of the air, then you can start to get a really obnoxious and really noticeable thud, something like this. It may not be quite that dramatic, I'm trying to do it really obviously and, and really concentrate to get that distinction. But maybe if you recorded yourself and slowed down the recording, it might actually sound that bad. And what that means is that first of all, you're probably putting too much pressure on the reed with your tongue and really smacking it kind of aggressively to get that really clear thud. But also you don't have the air support continuing behind it to get the reed vibrating immediately. If you have enough air support, oftentimes it'll actually cover up that thuddy articulation because the reed will still start vibrating immediately when the tongue comes off. But when when you combine a little bit bad air support and a little bit of new air support for every single tongued note, along with a little bit of too smacky of a tongue motion, then you can get some really weird, nasty thuds at the beginning of notes. And this can be a particular issue as you start to play higher notes, because you might end up with undertones because you don't have enough air support to get the actual high note out, because as you tongue, the motion of the tongue is making your air support back off as well. So it's really truly takes practice to get your tongue moving independently and keeping that air going steadily the whole time. All right, this next problem is a true tongue position, tongue motion problem. So say normally when you're slurring, you have that good high tongue position, but sometimes when people go to articulate, they'll change their tongue position because maybe Normally the tongue's a little too far away from the reed and then when they articulate they have to get it closer to the reed or something like that. Or just in general they're used to one kind of tongue position when tonguing and that's not the optimal tongue position for playing. So maybe slurring it's a nice good high tongue position but then when they go to tongue they'll drop the tongue and have it be lower in the mouth so that the 
tongue can touch the reed more easily or touch the reed in a way that they're used to. A good indication that this is an issue is that slurring may sound great and be wonderful, but then once you start articulating, the sound quality diminishes overall. And that might sound something like this. So hopefully you can hear when I'm slurring, it's a nice clear focused sound, and then I start tonguing and the sound sort of spreads and gets yucky. If this is happening, I think the first place to check is that your tongue is in the same position when it's slurring as when it's tonguing. But a couple other good things to check in with would be your embouchure. Sometimes when we start moving our tongue, the embouchure just likes to tighten up, so that might cause the sound to be a little bit thinner or not quite as good quality, just because you're adding extra pressure as you start concentrating on tongue motion. And then of course the other thing is your air pressure. Like I've said a few times now in this video, it's really important that the tongue motion is completely independent from the air and the embouchure. Now the next common issue is sort of a hybrid where yes, you maybe have good tongue position for the most part, but then when you go to tongue, it gets bad and then you return quickly to the good tongue position. This is a pretty common issue and it may be hard to notice that you're good and then bad and then back to good, but what you will feel is that your tongue is moving too much. And what this sounds like usually is sort of really unsteady notes, sort of scooping notes, and really not a clear, clean, consistent quality to the sound because you have all kinds of different tongue motions going on where you maybe go down to touch the reed and then you really pull away from the reed because you're trying to do an articulation and thinking about moving your tongue away and then you finally make it back up. So you sort of get this circle effect going that really creates inconsistencies in the sound quality like this. <laughs> So if you ever hear weird pitch changes when you're tonguing notes or any kind of inconsistency in the sound quality, make sure that that tongue position is staying in that good up tongue position and you really are just moving just the tip of your tongue. And the final tongue position, tongue motion issue that I want to mention is actually anchor tonguing. And this is where your tongue is actually anchored to your bottom teeth. So the tip of your tongue is hanging out, touching your bottom lip, or your bottom teeth, it still creates a decent shape where the back of the tongue can be high, but you end up having to sort of hit the reed with the middle of your tongue because the tip of your tongue is really far down. This can actually result in okay playing and there are some professionals who actually anchor tongue and sound very good. However, it can be quite cumbersome to play really quick articulation because it's a much harder motion to get this part of your tongue moving rather than just the tip of the tongue. So if you feel like the tip of your tongue is touching your bottom lip or touching your teeth, your bottom teeth while you're articulating, then you want to think about bringing it a little bit higher in the mouth, a little bit further back so that it's just the tip of the tongue touching the tip of the reed. And thinking about the tip of the tongue touching the tip of the reed is actually one little bonus idea that I want to throw in there. I think this is the most common one that everybody's heard, but sometimes if your tongue is a little too far down, not necessarily anchor tonguing where it's touching the bottom lip and the bottom teeth, but further down where it's not truly the tip of the tongue touching the tip of the reed, that can cause issues as well, where you end up getting sort of a fuzzy sound to the starts of notes because you might have your tongue start to move away and just a little bit of the reed vibrates before it actually comes off and you get this sort of weird fuzzy start to notes. <laughs> You can hear how it's a really, again, unclear note. It's sort of a slow start to the note. So if you're hearing, especially that fuzzy start to notes, make sure that it's truly the tip of the tongue at the tip of the reed and that it's coming away very quickly. Um, we still don't wanna to touch the sharp part of the reed or the tip tip of the reed. It's still touching the flat part of the reed here, but it's not really far down and it's not sort of slowly ungluing itself. It's right at the tip 
and quick motion on off between those two positions like a light switch like I talked about in the beginning of the video. All right, I'm going to erase this now so you don't have to look at this weird alien mouth anymore. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have any of these issues and you've noticed them and, and learned something from this video, leave a comment. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like for sure. This video was also sort of an idea from somebody in a comment section asking me to talk about the tongue motion. So if you have any ideas for videos that you would like to see or any questions about clarinet things, definitely leave a comment with that as well. I'm always happy to make videos explaining some of this stuff for all of you. So let me know what you want to know about. Subscribe to the channel so you can see those videos that I make in the future. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you in another video.